Okay, so this time what we're going to do is we're going to replace the thermal switch on a Myla Sport. This uh, switch is the 41641. It's used in about six or eight of the Myla showers, and the problems that you have fitting this are exactly the same as we'll have in the Myla Sport. So if you've got, to, if you have to fit one of these, the issues are exactly the same when you come to fit it. Um, first of all, um, I'll test the existing switch. Basically what happens is if the tank overheats, the, uh, the switch will cut out. If it cuts out too often or the temperature becomes too high, it fails completely. And so what, there's no power passes from one end to the other. So the power comes in here and as long as it doesn't overheat, power comes out there and off to the elements to heat it. And so basically a faulty thermal switch will have no continuity or power at only one side. So I've got my meter set here for continuity um, and we'll pop it on either side. Of course, first of all, I've made sure that this is isolated from the mains and this has got continuity, so that means that the thermal switch is okay. But in terms of doing this video, what we'll do is we're going to strip this one out and fit another one. So, the uh, this is fairly difficult to get into these screws in here. So what we'll do is, first of all, is we'll remove, not remove, but just slacken off the screws that hold the heating tank in. They don't need to come out all the way, just a few turns each. And this allows the tank to come forward just enough to, um, to get a bit of space to get into the screws on top. I should have perhaps said earlier that um, depending upon the age, you're going to need a Torx T10 bit in your screwdriver, or in this case a Torx T15. It depends on the age of the shower. So, um, we've got the tank slackened off here, but the next thing we need to do that is absolutely essential is get your camera or phone out and take quite a good number of pictures of just the way the wiring is laid out. Now, the wiring in these has changed over the years, so there's different layouts at different times. They're more or less the same, but take a good few, a good few pictures to make sure that when you're putting them back, that there's no mistakes. So the first thing to do in this particular model is release the earth screw. None of these should be particularly tight. Now that's released the TCO itself, but before we actually try to take that out, it's a good idea just to slacken off the screws that hold the wires on. Don't undo them completely, just slacken them off. And now we come to the difficult bit, getting this out. Now, to be honest, I don't think I've ever taken one out as easily as that before, because uh, they're really a difficulty often getting the wires to move the right way. So here's the new TCO, and what we need to do is just to make sure we orientate this the same way as the old one. So that's the way the new one's going to go in, like this. And the easy way to do this is just to do the wires one at a time. If we don't take them off the screw and pop them back onto this, the new TCO, once again, don't tighten them up. Just get them in Oops. enough to, to hold it in place. That noise was my meter shutting down. And so we'll take this one off now. Once again, we'll try and hold the screws and the connections all in place. That's it. Why don't we put them back onto this part here? I did say this wasn't the easiest job in the world.
difficult to hold all of these bits in place at the one time and the wires are very heavy so they tend to try and spring away. The, the one thing to remember here is if you're doing this over a bath or over a shower make sure you've got something in the plug hole uh, to make sure that this doesn't jump, you don't lose the screw. I'm really just demonstrating how difficult this can be. That's us this thing here, that's it in this time. So that's us, got the wiring back in place. Now all we've got to do is to try and slot the TCO itself back into place. Back, there's no screw, it just goes into, into a little lever thing, and that's it in there, and that's that. Now we'll put the earth wire back on and just hold the TCO back down um, and into place. Here we are. that roughly down. Now here's one of the really important bits, is the wires are all crammed in here very tightly so when you're actually tightening the, the uh, connections back up to the, the thermal cutout, make sure that you haven't got them pushed against one of these um, bits for the rods that come out of the heating tank and make sure they're all clear of all the other bits. So this side's fairly easy, just in case of tightening this up, and that's it. This side's much more difficult because the wires are so close to each other, it's difficult to make sure that they don't touch anything else. But I'm pretty certain that's okay. The answer is really is to get them to the stage where you're not quite tight and you can move them about and they won't spring anywhere. That's pretty good. Finally tighten the earth down. And just go back over and make sure everything's tight. Finally, before tightening the tank up, I'm just going to just double checking that these wires are nicely clear of all the other wires in there, and they are. And so now all I've got to do is screw the tank back together, and that should be the TCO fitted. Okay, and so just the last screws that secure the tank back in place. That's it, tank's nice and firmly in place now. Job done.